Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. See what's on the menu this week and get three meals free with your first purchase and free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash allaboutandroid. And by WordPress, your customers want to find you. Build a WordPress.com website and help them connect with your business. Get 15% off any new plan purchase at wordpress.com slash allaboutandroid. And by ZipRecruiter, are you looking to hire a tech professional? With ZipRecruiter, you can post to 100 plus job boards, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. Hello, and welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode number 328, recorded on Tuesday, August 1st, 2017. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason L. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Hello, the three of us, or is it the four of us? Because sitting here at the table with us in person for the first time, David Ruddick, AndroidPolice.com. How's it going, David? Going great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yay. You made the trek into the studio. Yeah. We will always have you yeah. in the studio. Anyone, wow. anyone that wants, wants to come to, drive to the studio. Out here. It's, pretty, yeah. it's very scenic, but it's... Be- because it's it's not an easy drive, as you can attest. It's, it was a little ways. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's not... And it's not even necessarily that it's distance. It's just that traffic in the Bay Area can really suck. But you were living in L.A. before. I was. Yeah, and I know true. the traffic is, is a whole it is. different Travel's more of a lifestyle there. there. You know, you just sort of... You, you embrace it. You wear it. It becomes part of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you get used to it compared to what you've experienced? I, I think here? so. Yeah. yeah, here it feels much more like an encumbrance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it could be painful out here. Well, you do you do this drive pretty much every week, and you encounter pain. Well, she's only coming from from the north, from yeah. above the bay. I get she's to not drive, coming from the bay I drive area. through all the vineyards on the way here. Oh well, that's pretty. Yeah. Pleasant, that's why I get actually. stuck behind horses and like wine trucks, yeah. and yeah. then I'm like. I, I, I gotta say, I don't. I don't miss the 25 minutes it would take me to get from H Street to the bridge yeah. uh, to get the to get to the Petaluma. Like a third of the trip was just getting through the three miles of San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, dri- driving for that period of time is okay if you're constantly moving, but when you're stuck yeah. for 45 minutes going super yeah. slow and you can see where you need yes. to go, but you know you're not going to be there uh, for another 45 minutes, that's the worst. The stop in Novato, when the traffic slows up in Novato, it's like, <laughs> oh, so there's that big yellow, build, that big white building on the hill. And I would know, depending on how yep. far back the traffic was, how much, how, how long it was going to take. And uh, yeah. so, so anyone that wants to experience the drive for themselves, you can uh, sure. tickets at twit.tv and you can get stuck in traffic and watch the show. In tickets person. are free. <laughs> exactly. We'll give you a space in the studio, maybe a cup of water. It's okay. You're welcome to our home. Uh, anyways, thanks for uh, making the trek and, and being here in person. It's great to have you here. We have some of your stories in. You brought a bunch of hardware. So is Flo. Flo, you brought. We have a lot them. of stories today. We have a lot of stories. Most of today's doc is all hardware related, even though I still split it into news and hardware segments. We don't have apps today. We do in the arena. We'll get there, but we've got a lot to talk about. Vic and Dotra, you remember him, or do yeah. you remember him? Yeah. He has some statements, yeah. some things that he said about smartphone photography that we'll talk about. The end of life for the next bit. Robin, uh, another foldable tablet concept that apparently we want. LG's Yay. Tone. I know, Ron, you want the foldable tablet. <laughs> I do. LG's Tone Studio. Moto Z2 Force. We have that hands-on here uh, in studio. We've also, well, you brought another Moto phone. I do. I have the E4 Plus as well. Oh, if you okay. can keep Motorola's naming schemes. It's straight. hard. It is. It's there a, are a lot of letters and fours and fives and S's and pluses, minuses, division. Yeah. That's why you're here to keep it all straight for us. So thank you for bringing those. We'll talk about those. Samsung Connect Home and a whole lot more. See, tons of hardware. Uh, but we don't go there until we go here with the news. So if you can't make it to the studio and you're stuck in traffic, don't worry because we've got Android news. Ooh. One of these days, we're all going to say Android News with you. It'll be epic. Wait, we are? Now we're going to do that? Now there's another thing we I have to do? We could try that someday. Another thing I have to do. I know, yes. 
We'll add it to your list. I'll <laughs> preface you before the show. We'll okay. we'll kind of prep you. Ooh, changes. You'll meet with the production supervisor. We'll we'll rehearse. We'll go okay. over it. Mm. It a takes lot. a lot of practice. It takes a village. <laughs> yes, and a lot of practice. Mm. Uh, okay, so the great photography on smartphones debate is raging on. This time, former SVP of engineering, Vic Gendotra, who also happened to be the guy behind Google+, Plus, or at least a big I feel vocal. like you bury the lead in there. <laughs> <laughs> what? So the, you, never mind, go on. No. What, no, I was saying because he's the former head of Google Plus. Yeah. Okay. Is, okay. Okay. Well, sorry. I guess go maybe, on, I under, go on. maybe I underplayed his role. Yeah, you underplayed. I guess. Sure. To be honest, okay, because I completely phraseology. forgot what his actual role was. So thank you for that. Oh. Uh, anyways, Vic and Dotra, uh, he had a few choice words to say on Facebook of all places about smartphone photography that everybody's apparently very worked up about. He says, if you truly care about great photography, you own an iPhone. If you don't mind being a few years behind, you buy an Android device. He makes the case that Android's open nature sets it back in terms of hardware and software innovation. He says Apple doesn't have constraints of being open and can innovate in the hardware and just ship it. He says Android uh, with Android, OEMs like Samsung had to actually convince Google to allow its innovations to surface to other applications, which would be handled via an official API. He says that takes forever. Um, and and it, I think one of the quotes that everybody's really worked up about is that he says the iPhone 7 signals, quote, the end of the D DSLR era. These are all, this is big statements from a former Googler. He hasn't been with Google for the last four years. Not, but well, I mean, it makes sense. The guy behind Google Plus would be talking about this because he was the one who in, like introduced this photo part. Yeah, of I was just, Plus. I was going to say the same Auto thing. Awesome not, only was, yeah, not only was he behind Google Plus, but he was the one that was big on you know, the, the events thing and adding photos to events and really kind of the merging of photos in with Google Plus as well. Like he was very bullish on photography and its role in your, your you know, personal account on Google Plus. And about the, the capabilities that they were working with, with Nexus devices and the camera in the next Nexus device is going to be really good. David, I saw your thoughts on Twitter. I know you have thoughts and this is like the perfect story for you. Where are you at right now? I feel like Vic and Docha probably hasn't used many Android phones in the last couple of years. Probably so. I, 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 I don't really get his, his kind of argument that the Apple camera experience is so much better when his argument seems to come down to, well, they put a longer lens on it and you can take portrait photos. I mean, you could do that with Android years ago, too. Nobody chose to, but mm -hmm. it was it was kind of a strange comment to make. And then to talk about how Google's taken a back, step back from computational photography, right. that didn't make any sense to me at all. Because the what makes the pixels such strong cameras is their computational photography, mm -hmm. and that's probably one of the things that actually might make them a superior camera to the iPhone in certain respects. What is the iPhone doing that's that's computational? I mean, the 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 portrait mode isn't, and that seemed to be a big part of what he was really impressed with was portrait mode. Yeah. Like, I don't know that iPhone is really doing much in that regard. I mean, they're doing stuff with the Photos app, and I think they probably have, you know, some, I think people have made the point that maybe the editing tools natively are more powerful, um, and that, okay. I guess you could say that's part of computational photography, yeah. but I think Google's doing some pretty incredible stuff in terms of, like, search in the photos, um, and surfacing stuff, and telling you, like, oh, well, you took these pictures you don't need, um, because you haven't ever looked at them. Do you want to get rid of these? Mm -hmm. um, they're doing all this cool stuff that makes managing your photos easier. And then for like Vic and Dojo to point to like Auto Awesome is this great thing. I never really liked the stuff Auto Awesome created. It always was no. really bizarre. I really liked it for a long time. At, <laughs> a, at a certain point, though, it got really noisy. Like it, yeah. there, it was cool when it was a unique little thing like, hey, we created this thing, this animation of a burst mode of your of your GIFs or whatever. But now there's stuff happening all the time that it's kind of like it lost its luster a little bit. It lost its uniqueness. And so I turned to it a lot less. But uh, I've definitely saved a lot of them. I thought it was kind of neat. I think he has a point, though, with his last line about the iPhone 7 signaling the era of the DSLR, though. Because, the end of the DSLR. Or the end of the DSLR, yes. Because, I mean, portrait mode showed that you can... It showed iPhone users... A lot of iPhone users maybe aren't as, you know, tech savvy or maybe like... Well, I mean, there's a lot of users like that on the Android side, too. Oh, yeah. But it's just the idea that you can make this nice, like, in-focus portrait photo with just, like, your smartphone. You don't really need to have all this really high-end hardware. You're already paying a lot for a phone. Yeah. 
why shouldn't it like shoot the kind of photos that you want to take with the DSLR? In my short time with the iPhone 7 when Megan and I did the trade for like mm -hmm. a month, that was one of the things I actually really liked about it was the portrait mode. But it's not like you don't have that in Android. I just spent two weeks with the OnePlus 5. Yes, And it has the true. dual camera setup and you can do portrait on that. And maybe the results aren't as as uh, as good or as refined as what you do get on the iPhone, but I got a pretty I got a decent amount of pictures that I felt pretty happy with uh, in, that were portrait mode on the OnePlus Five. So it's not like it's impossible either. I just you know feel I mean? like stuff that's on the iPhone sort of gets evangelized a little more. Oh, for sure. Then when there's because something so on Android, because we're still kind of our little like still kind of a little niche. Yeah. Well, if you but but mainstream. but you. To, but to your point, Flo, even if you look at it, like they, uh, Apple has built entire ad campaigns around the camera exactly. and photography. Yeah. I mean, if you for for months, if you walked on the subway tunnel between yes. the seven, the the AC and E and the seven subways at Forty Second Street, it's a long tunnel, and the entire wall was just iPhone photos and like taken with an iPhone, taken with an iPhone. So they've really done a great job marketing the iPhone's camera skills. Uh, and that's what, you know, kind of, and I think that's fueled a lot of the opinions, but yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's completely uh, uninformed to say that good photography can't happen on Android. That said, I don't agree that the iPhone or Android is the death of the DSLR. I think that's a whole nother category of photography that is not gonna go away because, you know, with those amazing lenses and the stuff they can do with DSLR technology now, um, like that, that will, sh would and should always exist. I don't want to see professional photographers using cell phones. Like that's not, like, you know, like that it's not the right tool for that job. Yeah. For, not for, for the amateur maybe, but not for the, not for a real photography in you're, my opinion. You're right about that, Ron. I also, when you were saying about like the advertisements in the subway, I wish I could like send Google the photos I took overseas and be like, just make ads out of this. I'm not even that, <laughs> like they're the best photos, but just to say that like, I was just so impressed by all the photos that my Pixel had taken. And I was just, I was very happy not bringing anything else that I traveled light. Yeah. I was totally fine with it. I feel like smartphone marketers probably are really would just hate to be, you know, like forced into that box that Apple's created. I, know, I think that's most of what it is now. Well, Apple's done it, so we can't do it. That's, you it, know. No, you're right, though. It's true. Like, you have to find a different angle. Yeah. It's, it's hard. And plus, I think people would see it as, oh, look at that Google. It's copying Apple. Oh, I don't yeah. know. By <laughs> like creating good photos. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're good photos. How totally trying they? to be Apple. How dare those Android users get good photos? Oh, they want to be different. Now they want photography. Exactly. All right. So non-story. Someone in chat was like, this is such a non-story. And of course it is, but it's fun to talk it's about. It's a fun discussion. <laughs> you know? well, I mean, any, anytime you have an ex, ex, ex high level yeah. Googler. An ex. Who, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Who worked, who, who worked directly on these products, trash talking it. It's interesting. Doesn't so, like yeah. your new girlfriend. She's going to come yeah. around and say some things. Yeah. <laughs> just happens. Uh, on that note, something that also just is, is happening soon is Bluetooth battery level indicators coming to Android. Um, am I the only one who's excited about this? Because let me tell you, I wish I knew oh, what I my hope things so. were doing. Yeah. Well, I have a I have an app that does this. I mean, this is a case I, I use Battery Widget Reborn 2017 that does this fine. Uh, and I, I guess this is an example of them taking something an app is doing and bringing it into uh, into the OS. Yes. So a new API in AOSP, which I can never say very fast, shows that the Bluetooth battery level indicators are going to appear with developers choosing how to look and when they surface. Hopefully this means our favorite manufacturers are going to uh, put these into their Bluetooth connected things. It won't be a part of 8.0, but it might be in line for 8.1 whenever that hits. I don't understand why this wasn't a part of 1.1. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we? I don't even know if we had Bluetooth. We've point had se we've had several. Jason, do you remember years ago there was a there was a there was a app or a settings thing that you could install that would give you the percentage of the battery life that was left on the on the on the notification bar? Uh, like you're, I just you're remember, remembering more than I can. There's just, I'm just too many apps. Through the, years, <laughs> yeah, through the year, through the years, there have been so many little apps that do this. You're right, Flo. I don't understand why it took this long. Well, I so. Prior to this, I was thinking about trying to find a, a very tailor-made app for just this purpose to bring into the arena for today, and I found one. And based on it, I, like I wasn't able to get any of my Bluetooth devices to work on it because I think I think what it's actually doing here versus what you can do so far is a little bit different. Like 
Bluetooth devices aren't constantly broadcasting their battery state. They just, yeah. some of them yeah. choose to throw that information out and who knows when it happens and some of them don't at all. So some devices, you could never have that transfer. And what I'm wondering is if this is a deeper level or a different implementation of that to where it does get that on a constant state in some Yeah, some I'm fashion. curious. I don't really I don't really know because I know Apple obviously is able to do this with mm -hmm. a pretty fine degree of accuracy. So I'm, I'm wondering if this is going to be compatible with Apple's solution in some way, right? The same broadcast that Apple devices receive, you know, Android devices be able to interpret them or if this is something that's going to have to be on new products only. I don't really, right. I don't really know. Yeah. <sighs> But I think we could all agree this would be really handy information to, mm -hmm. to get when you're using those wireless. Yeah. Because many times those devices that you're using, they have no indicator, no easy way yeah. of knowing, and you don't know whether it needs to be charged up or anything. Or they so just go, well battery, low, battery, battery low. low. How low, though? Do I have 20%? Because I'll still go with 20%. I'll, like, I'll try my chances. Mm -hmm. I will. I think we all will. Yeah. All right, Ron. I, I ran into this today, actually, because I have actually at work, I have an Apple mouse, like the magic mouse, and the battery was down like the 7%. And the dumb connector is at the bottom of the mouse, and you plug a USB cable into what? it to charge it, but then that makes the mouse useless while it's charging. And I was like, oh, that's a great, great design, Apple. Good job. Oh, I remember that. That's right. They yeah. had the connector yes. on the underside. <laughs> yeah. How do you people let them? I don't I understand. That, I remember that was a big. That was a. That was a, something that people pointed. Well, that out. is the awful. charging of the Apple pencil next to yes. it, um, just to get yeah. sticking <laughs> out. Don't bump into it. I remember those. Those were ridiculous. Oh my gosh! Oh, Talk about an appendage. Well, anyway, uh, so earlier today, actually, one of my friends hit me up and was like, "Oh, hey, did you see uh, Amazon suspended sales of blue phones?" And I was like, "Ah, they did that last year." I'm like, "The old news," and he's like, "No, they did it again." And sure enough, he was right. Um, so last year, last October, uh, the discovery of add up spyware on the blue R1 HD, the most popular phone and a bestseller on Amazon at the time, Amazon removed it from sale because of the spyware and add up said back then that it was a mistake and the spyware spyware was transferring data overseas. Blue took care of it, got this, got the phones back on sale. And now here we are nearly a year later and Amazon has suspended blue again for a new discovery of spyware in more expensive blue devices. Uh, CryptoWire showed this off at Black Hat last week, which is a hackers convention in Las Vegas. And it, uh, Black Hat and DEF CON happen at the same time. And that's the one you want to avoid Las Vegas like the plague because <laughs> yeah. all your data will be gone. Um, I, I was in New York and I don't feel safe. But uh, anyway, uh, so at, at Black Hat, uh, the, uh, CryptoWire showed this off. And basically this ha uh, the spyware could result in remote operation, uh, scooping up a text messages and call logs, et cetera. And in response to this, Amazon removed all models of Blue devices until the issue is resolved. And Amazon also removed Blue from the Prime Exclusive Phones program that Amazon adds to the lock screen. So Amazon just jumping all over this and, and bringing the hammer down on Blue again. Is, is this just a standard operating procedure for Blue I think at this Am point? <laughs> I think Amazon's just afraid of any bad PR. This could generate them and yeah. probably just cutting their losses. I guess yeah. we'll see what happens. Blue released a statement to The Verge, I think, and probably some other outlets that they were expecting the phones to be reinstated quickly on Amazon. I don't, I don't think that that's mean? very likely. Like like without any changes to yeah anything? because well their their position is nothing has changed from the way we were shipping the phones last year so why all of a sudden have they been pulled even oh. though nothing has changed but the, the but the but at the black hat yeah. they're basically saying okay maybe nothing has changed the optics but it's still have bad. changed <laughs> yeah. yes exactly right. the optics have changed okay all right but before before we move on I feel like Brian needs to tell everyone what he wrote in our chat room in our private chat <gasps> no that's why I was in the chat because it's so bad oh, no. Nope. But... Nope, it's worth it. You tell okay. everyone what you say. You tell them what you did. You could say they blew it. Ah, yeah. See, I would have been more surprised had I not looked in the chat room. And I could yeah. have given you a, an authentic And then reaction. he put asterisks, put, put sunglasses, sunglasses on. on. Yeah. I think that's actually so. very appropriate. <laughs> if we could get a sun, an ad sunglasses deal with it transition yeah. in the TriCaster, Top yeah. priority list. I'll work uh, on be, it. I'm great. on it. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, Paul, aka Hot Branch, apparently from Buzz Out when I That's did Buzz hot. Out Loud uh, <laughs> years ago, uh, says, "I'm hoping you can help me select my next phone. I'm currently using a OnePlus X with my with my oh, beloved. Oh, the OnePlus X. Uh, next is good or bad? 
Oh, it's such a beloved device of okay. the past. Anyway, right. go on. Well, also <laughs> beloved is his backup, the Nexus 5. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves mm -hmm. the Nexus yes. 5. Uh, he says, but the Pixel has been a strong draw. One pro only problem is that 32 gigs is not enough storage. I agree. Uh, so I've been waiting for the 128 gig Pixel to become available. Why not offer a 64 gig version, Google? Anyways, uh, I got an email yesterday telling me the 128 gig model is back in stock, but with the Pixel 2 slated to come out in the fall, should I just wait for the new hotness? I should mention that my that a 5-inch screen is my sweet spot for phone size. The rumors I've read are that the smaller Pixel 2 could revive the Nexus name. I don't know if I had heard that. Uh, but anyways. News uh, to me. <laughs> uh, which poses a new issue. The Nexus cameras have been average at best. Do you think the Pixel camera technology makes it to the new phones, or will there be a difference in quality if the Nexus name is revived? I don't think that's happening. That's, that's no. not happening. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that that's happening. I think you're going to get good camera. I doubt Nexus as a name is coming back. Mm -hmm. I, I think they've moved on from that. That ship has sailed. Um, so I guess the Although, main... Although, well, before well, you yeah. definitively say that... I have no data, but I feel like the moment that we say that's definitely not going to happen is when it does happen. Okay. Nothing is so, certain true. on all about Android. Yeah. Everything is <laughs> or with Google. With, yeah. with Google, basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. and, and if they're going to announce it, it's going to be tomorrow because tomorrow's after the show. Yeah. Everything right, is exactly. announced on yeah. Wednesday. It's never Tuesdays. <laughs> um, also worth noting that the rumors say that we should be getting a five-inch device. Possibly. You mean the pixel, the, the yes. upcoming pixel? Yes. Well, yeah, they'll they'll have the two different sizes. Exactly. For so for five, the five inch lovers, the lovers of the five inch, then five inch they lover. can they have something uh. to look forward to in their life. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's five inch lover just for some reason stuck out to me. Uh, <laughs> pixel two. Uh, do you wait for the pixel two or do you get the yeah. one twenty eight gig pixel one? Well, see, and then I just wrote. Oh God. This is like giving it away. I just like wrote a whole thing today about how I'm not getting rid of my Pixel because I already think it's like the perfect phone for me. See, and mine's slowing down a little bit, but that's because I install See, I'm not apps. having that problem. Yeah. And I install apps and uninstall apps all the time. I actually, I, I notice it now how slow it is after using the OnePlus 5. Oh, the fingerprint software. scanner? Yeah, that especially. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's the, that's going to be, I think, hopefully something that See, Google I upgrades. I thought it was yeah. my dirty, nasty hands. <laughs> it's so slow. It's <laughs> wow. just like... <laughs> Title, wow. my dirty, nasty hands. <laughs> no. Uh, or yeah, makeup on your hands. How are you supposed to use the fingerprint sensor, people? It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine. I can understand, kind of. Uh, Paul. Sweaty, sweaty fingerprints also do that. But anyways. Paul. You should wait. I think you should wait. I think if you can hold out a little longer, you should wait. It's just like two months. They'll be gone. They'll be gone and over before you can even know it's there. Yeah. So yeah. that you know yeah. what's happening. It's, it's definite don't, wait. Don't I regret. Wait. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I'm in, I'm in a similar boat, and we're gonna talk about it a little later on. But I'm I'm in the market for a new phone, and I'm in that. Do I wait for the Pixel two? Do I just get the Pixel? Do I wait for Essential to ever ship? Um, you know, like it's a, it's a tough spot to be in. It's a very yeah. tough spot to be in. Cause yeah. you want it, you want to act, you want a new device. You want to pull that trigger. Yeah. Wait, waiting seems like a lot to have to deal with when you're it's on only a device 60 that needs days. to be upgraded. A lot of but. people, you know, have to wait 60 days for things. Like remember back in the days of shipping? Well, How I think, long you stick to ship things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I think what we've, probably pointed out the last few times we talked about this sort of thing is <laughs> don't worry we won't use five inch lever as the title to whoever put no next to it in the title <laughs> option there all i saw is in our doc i see five inch lover and i just wrote no <laughs> uh you know but sometimes it's good to put options up there this it's is an evening to have more show this is have. an evening show that's right um i just lost my train of thought uh, sorry i just once I again train of thought lost by a sexual oh, innuendo oh, I, I remember I remember is that there are very specific parts of the year that where it's smart to to act and where it's smart to wait. We have just entered the the point of the year where it's probably a good idea to wait a little bit because you've got the note uh, the next note being released or announced. You've got the essential phone that, that is right around the corner. We hope we think. Who knows? Um, we've got the Pixel announcement happening in the next couple of months. We've got the LG V30 too. LG V30, which yes, that would be easy for me to forget, um, but I'm happy you remembered it. <laughs> Everybody forgets it. Uh, it's okay. Exactly. That's, it's an LG problem is, is what that is. Um, so I don't know. I feel, I feel like we're we're right on the cusp Just of wait. finding more really yeah. great. Go take a sewing I mean, class. It's, I mean, it's it's August, so that means that all the announcements are coming, right? Like, yeah. they're going to start coming the end of this month, beginning of next month. See what those are, and then see where you stand. Yep. 
Uh, all right. Excellent. So uh, that's what you're going to do, Paul, a.k.a. Hot Branch. Uh, there you go. Thank you for emailing. All right. Let's take a break. Thank the sponsor of this episode and then talk about some hardware. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Blue Apron. Yes, this is the point in our evening show where you get really, really hungry. I'm going to too because I haven't eaten dinner and Blue Apron always satisfies. And if you've ever uh, checked out Blue Apron or even if you haven't, um, you, you probably know that cooking together, cooking with people builds strong bonds, especially when you do it with your family, bring, bring the whole family into the process. It's just a really cool uh, experience. And Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone. Also supporting a more sustainable food system, setting the highest standards for ingredients and building a community of of home chefs. That's what it's all about. They send you a box full of food and it's up to you to put those com those ingredients together. They give you the recipe and uh, they just make it in inexpensive to feed everyone and it's always changing. For less than $10 per person per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals and doesn't take much more than 40 minutes, it's right around 40 minutes or less. There's no weekly commitment so you only get deliveries when you want them. You can actually get in there and customize your recipes every week based on your dietary preferences. Uh, you can choose from a, a variety of new recipes every week. You can get in there and manage it yourself, or you can let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Uh, so just an idea of what you might get in your box. Upcoming meals include basil pesto chicken with summer vegetable panzanella, uh, sautéed shrimp, and green beans with globe tomatoes, spinach, and orzo pasta. There's whole grain pasta and summer vegetables with heirloom tomato caprese salad. Is it caprese or caprese? Either way, it's caprese. delicious. Thank you. I knew you'd know the answer to that, Ron. <laughs> uh, miso butter salmon and lo mein noodles with cucumber and charmed tomatoes. Uh, all sorts of delicious meals. They send you all the ingredients. They send you the recipe card, and you put it all together. Uh, Blue Apron has established partners with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranches across the U.S., and they ship the exact amount of every ingredient that's required for the recipe. So that reduces food waste. It also makes making those recipes very easy. And their freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they're going to make it right for you. Check out this week's menu and get three meals free with your first purchase and free shipping. Just go to blueapron.com slash allaboutandroid. You're going to love how, how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Check it out for yourself. Uh, go to blueapron.com slash allaboutandroid and put all these ingredients together and see what you come up with. Blue Apron. A better way to cook. All right. It's the first part of a two-parter, uh, the, the original and the sequel of Hardware. And they're both amazing. Both movies are I was going to say, I hope they're like Toy Story and the yes. first part is as good as the second and the third. And hopefully the fourth. Or, or, or I, 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 hope, I, hope none of, I hope none of these are like the end of that third Toy Story movie because, man, that made me question my that, existence. Yeah. Oh. That yeah, was... It was a little rough. When, when they're facing death and they just all hold hands and, and look at each like, other. It's ending. Oh. How did this happen? Anyways. Speaking of questioning things, <laughs> yes. LG might be questioning what it's doing with its flagship choices <laughs> because its free premium <laughs> smartphones are continuing to not sell very well according to its latest earnings report, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, apparently, there are, quote unquote, weaker than expected premium smartphone sales and increases in component costs. The LG G4 and LG G5 both also had weak sales that fell short of expectations. And years pass, yeah. Of course, we have to take into account the G6 did have kind of outdated specs when it was announced. It uh, maybe, you know, had to contend with the little phone we call the Galaxy S8. Maybe a little bit. That Just had a the bit. Snapdragon 835 Snapdragon in it. Snapdragon 831. Although, how many people really know that other than people who follow it closely but yeah i, I just i don't know I, I wish i could say this was unexpected but <laughs> it's it doesn't see it doesn't feel unexpected in any way i don't know i just feel like lg every year seems to get a little less attention yeah yeah and i think that's really what's probably hurting them at it, this point is that a weakness on lg's part or is that a strength on samsung's part because samsung is a behemoth they are and I, I, I know that LG, you know, and Samsung like to position, or LG likes to position themselves as kind of at parity with yeah, Samsung in a lot of ways. Sure. And, and maybe in some areas of consumer electronics, they are like TVs and home appliances. But with mm -hmm. phones, it's just, it's getting harder to put them on the same level anymore. 
you know, technically, and then especially in terms of marketing. I mean, how have you guys ever seen an LG G6 advertisement? No. no. Yeah. I've seen more, more. I've seen more Motorola commercials than I've seen LG commercials on yeah. TV, and I never see anybody with a Motorola phone. Yeah, LG has good has good um, kind of relationships with carriers though. Like they you do. go into a carrier, you see a lot of LG. In yeah, the they store. have a lot of mid range yeah. phones there. Yeah. Their flagship stuff though does not seem to get much love. Oh, that's a good point. I do see a lot of like mid range LG phones out in the wild. Those I do see. Yeah. Um, do you think LG like trying to differentiate itself with a little second screen like that? I mean, I don't feel like that really took off. Like uh, it was kind of neat at first, but then it was like, eh, I don't know. It's just kind of annoying. Um, features like that just don't resonate with, with consumers. They don't yeah, really I guess not. I mean, they tried to, they tried to be more Samsung like this mm -hmm. year in terms of how they present the product and everything. And I feel like that was probably the best they could hope to do product wise. I think they differentiate enough on the camera and stuff and, I mean, they made a pretty good phone, mm -hmm. and they did. But <laughs> but it was also six hundred and fifty dollars, and right now I think like this week you can get, or was it yesterday? You get a Galaxy S8 for a little bit less than that, an unlocked one. Like there's just well, that is to say, there are other phones that are out that you know are comparable in price that maybe are a little more worth right dumping the money for. Yeah. Although yeah. I think you could probably find one now for like around five fifty on Amazon. Yeah, I think you can yeah, get or it for less. Cheaper now. Yeah. yeah, on eBay and stuff for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Just so you know, LG is doing fine thanks to its other divisions, like you were saying, home entertainment appliances, auto components. Did you guys know that LG and Samsung also both own beauty brands overseas? No. Yes, beauty they brands. do. They do. They're, they're enormous companies. Exactly. Like they are. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Just it's they're two giant South Korean companies, and I always just find it very interesting. Like they have literally everything in competition, like mm -hmm. yeah. down down to face lotion. Wow, no, I mean like I, I, like <laughs> wash washer dryer sets, dishwashers, microwaves, like appliances. Half my house lotion. is South yeah. Korean economy right there. Just yeah. The more right, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> G six, you right. can still get it. We'll we'll see we'll see if LG Help can LG. <laughs> can relive the uh, the Nexus Five glory. <laughs> I don't know. In my in my mind, Nexus Five is LG's shining moment. But that's just because I love the Nexus yeah. Five. Was no, that's just, <laughs> Nexus Five was the greatest phone, and and yeah. I think in the history of Android, it was. I mean, I, <laughs> okay, I, I, okay. It was, no, honestly, it was. Go back, go back to it at the it time great, great and device. the the, yeah. the time period that it existed. It was the right phone at the right time, yeah. and that it phone just right was a workhorse. Phone. That phone was a great phone. The camera uh -huh. wasn't very good. The battery life sucked. I remember the battery life was abysmal on that phone. That was really probably the main complaint I had about mm. it above everything else. There were definitely better choices, I feel like. It, it may have sucked, but it was better than the sucky battery on the Nexus devices prior to Oh, it. yeah, that's so, true. Well, and also, that was at a time where, where everybody had a sucky battery. I mean, yeah, it was, that's it, true. It, yeah, that's true. so... It was, it was it was just bad how bad do you want your battery to suck for me I mean I went through three of those Nexus Nexus five phones I love that phone yeah that phone you kept going back to that well yeah yeah, yeah. all right oh well, it's me sorry <laughs> it is you no, there you go I was like all right Ron oh wait a minute nope not not you it's me uh, we keep hearing that what we've always wanted is a tablet that folds into a phone <laughs> that's and what Lenovo, I want every day I hope Lenovo for got your back <laughs> at Lenovo God. Tech World the company showed the Lenovo Folio concept device. It's a 7.9 inch display when it's in tablet mode. Uh, oh, 1920 by 1440 resolution. Snapdragon 9800. I mean, that might be a typo. I may have put that in there correctly, <laughs> but Android 7.0. Uh, but the tablet can then fold in the center. There, There's a little hinge on the back. Oh and man! Look at this video. He's about to. He's about to do it. It looks a little I'm just kind of delicate when he does it. I'm just uh, waiting for the moment where he does it, and it's like for our audio listeners, there's someone demoing the uh, phone and showing it to people, and there it is. Uh, oh, oh my god, that's amazing. Uh, so he folds it into a phone. It turns into a 5.5 inch phone. One side is active as the screen. The other side, the phone side, the display turns off. As it folds, all of the UI elements kind of animate and, and like squish oh, over wow. onto the side that's the screen's still active. So it kind of animates in the process. There's a little bit of edge action around the fold, I think. Uh, it's, it's great as Brian. Can you back up to when he folds it? <laughs> 
I'm sorry. And, and for anybody who's listening to the show on audio, please go find. I think this is from what outlet is on this? Is this Mashable or uh, yeah, this is a, yeah. a video on Mashable. Okay, watch when he folds it. Look at the tension. Like it is not folding easily. No, right? it's <laughs> yeah, it's like a bulk of paper. Yeah. Being folded. It's, like, yeah. Yeah. it's like you're trying. It's like he's trying to fold a phone book in half. Oh right? yeah, you can see it kind of. Yeah, his hands shaking. You can a hear little it bit. creak it's, from this end. He's going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love. God bless Lenovo for being crazy like this. The, Look at the, him try to close it. It's just crazy. The microphone oh. probably wasn't good enough to hear him going. <laughs> no, no, it's really easy. Don't worry. No, it works. Like, so it's easy. <laughs> Inno innovation is this what con do consumers want a folding tablet into a phone or is this just spectacle because samsung's been threatening this too i think samsung actually had uh, years designs ago. Years yeah, ago. oh they've been doing this for yeah. years and i think their their plan i had heard at some point was that they were going to finally come out with something this year now i think that plan is pushed to 2019 so a couple of years uh <laughs> i mean it's just a curiosity right or is this the next i guess i also feel like maybe maybe i like hit my head on something i'm pretty sure that video was taken a year and a half ago at <laughs> lenovo world in san francisco it's possible yeah it's yeah, possible. i was there in the room. Okay. <laughs> well then, oh, wow. I, I, well I recognize right, people in the video. Yeah, so, that, uh, yeah, video looks that's really great. Familiar. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I was there for that, and I remember thinking, "Wow, that looks really fragile." Um, it says because the, the guys they were explaining, animal. they're like, um, uh, "You know, yeah, you can't really. We couldn't take this outside because it would probably just break." Um, Let's see here. Let's go to the YouTube video. Well, here. we're doing some some reverse Ashnel. journalism right ha! now. You are so right. The video on the wow. YouTube page, June tenth, twenty sixteen. <gasps> Did we? Did we make a discovery? Oh, wait, no, but there's another there's no. another video down below, the folio tablet concept. Oh, is there something newer that they've come up with? Oh, okay. oh. I missed that one. We showed the wrong one, y'all. Uh, okay, okay, so now there you see. Here we go. So that was the first update. concept we saw. Thank you for pointing that out, though. That's hilarious. Um, Okay, so okay. this is a little bit more refined. You don't see as much the there edges. There we go. Uh, oh, look at that. That folds much easier. There's not, And that's not a huge bezel. The person Look does not is not required to be a weightlifter in order to to close it up. Well, there's still like a, there's still a little tension there when he yeah. does it. You see, there's a sh there's a stutter step when he's closing it that it like it looks like it's pushing back on it. Yeah, little, yeah. here it goes. Here it comes less delicate. In the video, he's got the full tablet view, and then he goes to fold it, and it looks like he's gonna break it. Right? Did you see that? Oh, oh he almost drop it. dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> so when so when you're talking about foldable screen like this, it also probably means that the screen is you know you can't shatter it. It's not glass; it's a plastic, so it's more durable. It looks like a DVD case. It looks like yeah. it would get really gross after oh. like 15 minutes of use. Look now, at that! Now, now in this one, it activates both screens when it's in camera mode, so that's kind of interesting. I feel like that's what'll happen cool. is you'll fold it over and over, and then you'll get like a crease in the middle, yeah. and you'll want to yeah. like pull on it yes. and yeah. like pick at it and mess with it. Yes. Uh, which oh. would be gross. I just it, like what's the longevity of this sort of plastic display? Interesting. Wow. This, I just love this. These these. It's just crazy, crazy R and D design. Yeah. I mean, this is this is not for for consumer use yet. This is a concept. This right? is and this so, is an idea that will bring forth another idea, kind of like <sighs> so I you imagine. Can see, you can see the oh, yeah, oh there's yeah. the crease. You can see you can the crease. See the there's crease a bit is, of a noticeable yeah. crease on the tablet mm. and. I wonder what that would look like over time. Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. want my tablet to have wrinkles. I don't know about it. Everybody else. Yeah, no. I mean, that was a great observation. Look I at mean, that. That the, crease is noticeable when it's off. Yeah. You don't want the tablet wow. to have stretch marks. Like that. My tablet <laughs> is, is like aged crease, crease just marks. like my books. I'm yeah. telling you, we're going to have, we're going to have bendable displays at some point, man. And we're going to be roll up. You're going to roll up your phone and then unfold it to make a tablet. It's going to be great. The future is going to be amazing. I believe swallow it. it to store it. It's going to be so <laughs> weird. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be like, I believe. I believe. <laughs> David, should we do this email? Yeah, I just want to say I'm really happy that you figured that out because you probably yeah. saved us getting like a, a handful of emails on that. So thank you, David. You're welcome. Uh, for, for pointing out what should have been obvious. <laughs> I was wondering was why I noted I knew people in the video. David, David gets the MVP award for this episode. I know, right? right? Eagle eye. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Ron, go for it. So yeah, so we got an email from Jeff, which gets really oddly personal, uh, I gotta say, uh, but I'll read it anyway. So Jeff says, hey Ron, fellow Mets fan here. I read the following earlier today. I'm a little disappointed in you from the Mets to the coin card and now the next bit Robin. I've been watching you for a long time on all about Android and all the way back to revision three. It's time to step up your game. Maybe you should avoid your instincts and stay away from the essential phone, more vaporware. I guess, I guess as Mets fans, we're just, 
He meant to say gluttons, but he spelled glutens. <laughs> I'm going to leave that out there. Uh, we're just gluttons for punishment. I'll be watching the Mets live instead of all that Android as Ahmed Rosario is making his debut. I know I've got a little window going on right now watching the game. Uh, I'll see if my email makes the show in the morning. All good fun, but I would recommend the Pixel 2 for your next phone. And uh, what Jeff is referring to is the news that broke today that many of you uh, proceeded to tell me over Twitter, and I really appreciate it. To give a little background, Nextbit, the maker of the Nextbit Robin, uh, was uh, acquired by Razer and, uh, uh, last year and stopped selling the Nextbit Robin in January. Next, uh, and then today they announced that Nextbit has uh, announced that effective today, the Robin has reached the end of its support life. Uh, no more chat or phone contact. Uh, uh, outstanding RMA tickets will be handled via email. Um, and there's a self-help section, so uh, that that's that's going away too. And uh, basically, sorry, Rebels, the, 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 the game is over. And then next bit further went on later in the day to clarify that while support of the device is ending today, to clear up confusion, software updates will continue until February 2018 as planned. Um, so, hey, listen, man, you know, I, I'm not going to question my instincts. The, ne the next bit was a good enough phone that I got acquired. Who knows what Razer's plans for it is now. This is this is disappointing news, especially to everybody who bought like a $120 phone on Amazon last month. But um, last month. yeah, <laughs> that's true. But that's uh, true. listen, you, listen, you, 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 you're not going to make a cake without breaking some eggs. That's, that's my that's my life motto. You know, I'm, will, I'm willing to take a risk on a uh, innovative phone. Am I the only one? I mean, am I the only one like that wants new things? Like you guys just want? I know Flo, you just like the old same old Samsung phone, but like I want something different. We're 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 happy. I want more. You. Are you gonna start singing? I want to be where the people are. Anyway. I'm just imagining you I'm know. swimming up to shore and I don't know why you went to the little mermaid, but okay. <laughs> uh, just, yeah. Anyway, so but that said, that's us. We're gluten for punishment. So yeah. there it is. Thank you, Jeff, for the email. I hope you get uh, your emerald green phone, Ron. I truly hope that this happens for you. I do too. I would also like to take a moment to have Brian tell us what he has to say about this topic. <laughs> you could almost say the next pick Robin flew the coop. Oh. Okay, I see now I didn't see that yeah. coming. Yeah. <laughs> All I've got is ooh for you. Ooh. Yep. Oh. Good job. Good Brian has chickens, by the way, <laughs> so trying. it is timely. And yeah. I'll true. keep working on it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, do we wish that? Do we? Do you wish, oh. David, that that Robin there would be another Robin? And do you think that there will be? I don't think there. will No, be. I don't think so. No, not. No, I think Razor is probably going to release, it. it's going to have a lot of LEDs on it. Um, <laughs> a lot of green LEDs. Be, yeah, a lot it's of green be, LEDs. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be bottom lit and back lit and like neon and like really edgy. <laughs> Cherry red keys. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be the first phone with actual like full size keycaps on it. Key <laughs> keys. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna have a number pad on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to this phone. So. Now, yeah. Now be, I think that needs to happen. It's gonna be the gamer phone. I am curious what they're doing with it because it was under our impression that ne that Nextbit was continuing on as its own division, right? Like that's what that that's what was the word that came out of that acquisition was that it wasn't being folded into Razer that they were gonna continue on with their mission and just Razer own them and it was gonna be like you know kind of like Beats with Apple. Right. Um, but, you know, with them killing, essentially killing the Robin, I'm very curious what their next, what act two of the ne of next bit will be. So. You know, I just hope that uh, Nintendo swallows up some of those next bit designers because wouldn't it be kind of cool to see some, you know, Robin inspired design, some Nintendo things? I don't know. You mean like they, they the actual cool. design, the design of the phone? They it did. Was they, had, cool. they had interesting industrial design yeah, for sure. I would love yeah, to that see that, like, that was the main reason why I was attracted to it. Yeah. I get, I guess, I still get stopped once a week, at least once a week on the subway by somebody asking what it is. So I don't know. Hopefully, the essential ships, and that will be my next phone, or the Pixel Two will be awesome, or I'll just go back and get the Pixel, or maybe I'll try some other phone. Or Who maybe knows? you can switch back to your Nexus Five since it still was the greatest. Phone hey, ever. listen, if I had one, I would. To be honest with you, <laughs> what if I eBayed you one? If I found you one on eBay. <laughs> That's not that's not supported either, isn't isn't Nexus uh, Nexus Five support? It's at the end of the line. Oh yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, it's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can flash yourself some ROMs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like but, I mean, I've got a Nexus Five in the office that occasionally I use plugged into my system to be able to like stream vid video from it because it could do MHL. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, video output. So sometimes when I want to record apps and I want it to be pristine, I can do that. 
And uh, I mean, it's it's totally aged out at this point. Apps, you know, are slowing it down like nobody's business. Um, I, listeners, I, if you have any devices around the house that you're keeping around for one particular reason, please do send us a uh, email at what's our email? AAA at twit.tv. That's it. And uh, or a video mail because I am very curious to know what else people have yeah. resurrected Kicking around. Out there. I, I, I will tell you the next bit, Robin, what am I, I'm a year and a half into using it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm lucky if I get three hours of battery life. <gasps> oh. Really? <laughs> At all. That's it was bad. never very good wow. though. Yeah, no, I mean, it is like, so especially this past weekend where I was in a convention center from 9 a.m. until uh, 10 p.m. basically, um, numerous times I had to leave the convention center, go back to the hotel, do a quick charge. I always had a battery with me. Um, you know, especially the phantom power down, like basically 30% on this is zero. Like once it hits 30%, it just shuts off. Ooh. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's getting to be really painful. Yeah. So, wow. oh, well, okay. it's time to move on. Looks, looks great though. Looks great. As long as you look good. <laughs> looks great. Even when it's dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Even once you've moved on, just please carry that around with you powered off and just pretend to use it. So people will ask yeah. you what you have. Yeah. Also, why are you I'm, looking at a blank phone? Yeah. Yeah. You just can't I, see I, it. It's a security measure. I will say, I will say though, that as I was depending on that phone this weekend, there were several times when the battery died. I almost turned it into a foldable phone. Oh, so okay. I, <laughs> yeah. so, Fair enough. I can understand. Yeah, so. All right. Well, let's let's take a pause and let's thank our next sponsor. And we want to thank WordPress for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. And listen, we all know that uh, building something new, something that others connect with, is a lot easier with the right tools. And that's why we're excited to have WordPress.com as a sponsor. We use WordPress.com every day. I use it every day. And let me tell you, whether you're looking to create a personal blog, a business site, or both, creating your website on WordPress helps others find you, remember you, and connect with you. You don't need experience. You don't need to hire someone. WordPress.com guides you through the entire process. They have literally hundreds of beautiful designs to choose from. You'll get built-in search engine optimization and social sharing as part of your site. And their business plan lets you access hundreds of plugins and themes. You can choose a WordPress.com plan and you'll join a lively community where you'll have access to expert friendly support. And let me tell you, one of the main reasons why I've been using WordPress for so long is because of that community, because of that support. Very rarely do you run into a problem that someone else hasn't already had and they're ready to help you with the solution. WordPress really helps you build something great and keep it running. So come see why 28% of all websites run on WordPress, the web's most popular and most powerful site building platform. So get started today with 15% off any new plan purchase. Go to wordpress.com slash allaboutandroid to create your website and find the plan that's right for you. That's wordpress.com slash allaboutandroid. Get 15% off your brand new website. We thank WordPress for their support and keeping my websites running smoothly. Thank you, WordPress. There we go. Thank you, WordPress. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate you being on board. Okay, it's time. Do we have a hardware shack uh, bumper? We may have at one point, but I know this no. is the new TriCaster, and that's a very <laughs> random bumper to have somewhere. Okay, sure. It's all I got. Sure, sure, whatever, Brian. You you can't find that bumper that I think we've played maybe two times in the history of the show. Are you talking about the Caddyshack one? I'm all right. Uh, yeah, that yeah, that Bleak made. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look. I'll take a look. It's a, it's okay. We've moved on. But thank you. Uh, <laughs> We've moved on. Please. We've moved on. <laughs> All right, Flo. Uh, up first, not specifically Android, but you got- Not Android. You're I, wearing a beautiful necklace, I just, let me tell you. It's my beautiful necklace. It's made, it's made by a company called Legi. Legi. Oh. Uh, LG, LG, I think it's, yeah. Okay. Legi. All right. So what uh, these are Tone Studio. These are- Headphones slash speakers. And I realize that sounds really silly, but, and I thought they kind of sounded silly at first too, but I actually thought these were kind of really good pair of headphones to just have around the house. Um, first of all- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you can, can you show these again? Is that is that like a Logan's Run collar? What are you wearing? Yeah, so I'm wearing a, this is a neck band as they call it. This is like that, this is like the episode of Star Trek when Kirk and Spock Ow. got captured and they had the, <laughs> they had the, the collars. Too. They had the collars around their neck. It is kind of like that. Um, so it connects via Bluetooth, but it also has an auxiliary in if you need it, um, if your Bluetooth goes out. It also has retractable earbuds. Whoa. Oh, look at these. These are so interesting and cool. Whoa. Um, 
I'm actually a little worried by how thin these are, but yeah, I actually really they look like really thin. I really like the sound coming out of them. They're actually very bass heavy. And uh, this is DAC enabled, so you will get like the hi-fi sound, which is what like LG is known for or what they're trying to be known for. Um, there are three different like modes. You can do like a bass heavy mode, a treble heavy mode, or like a normal mode. But uh, I don't know, do you want to put them do you want to see them in action? Uh, yeah, well, I'm curious on the speaker front. Um, well, because so your okay. review, by the way, is on VR heads. It is on VR heads. Is this a VR like? Is this kind of like a good VR sound solution? Uh, this is a good solution for uh, like the Gear VR or okay. the Daydream view because like if you're gonna use an Oculus Rift, you're gonna use you know you're gonna have something high tech for that. But sure. if you just kind of wanna like play in your room yeah. with virtual reality, I just I like to pop these on. Sometimes. Uh, then, you know, people around you can hear what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And you don't have to feel deaf to the world. It's right. true. It's true. And you don't have to have to put so much stuff on your head. Like you could just put these on around your neck instead of like having a whole head set up. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that. And also they're my new favorite headphones for cleaning because <laughs> <laughs> it goes me around the house very easily. Do you ever um, feel like it's going to like loop around and fall off? It does. Neck? It does go a little like sometimes it'll get a little heavy yeah, around looks, the edges. That would make me nervous. But I mean, I have little stereo speakers to like listen to podcasts around the house. So I don't have to chase the Google homes and you know, I don't have to like cast to different devices. Um, they're also good for just like, if you want to use them with my tablet just like laying down in a corner. They're just, you know, like 140 bucks. Okay. How much, do they, how, much, how much do they weigh? Um, that is a good question. They're not Ask that someone, heavy. Give them to, give them to someone else. Give them to Jason or David. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Not even a couple of pounds. They're, they're pretty light. Hey, Jason, I mean, you, put, you put them on. You put them on. I mean, actually, it's about... <laughs> you want me to put these on? Like, <laughs> put them on. And then oh, I'll yeah. put on a Dixie <laughs> Chick song that you can listen to. <laughs> Yeah, please. All right. There's a Dixie Chick song playing. It actually kind of looks like the color. Right now. Shirt. All right. No. So do you want to, here, listen to the Dixie Chicks. Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to do speaker mode. No. Okay. Not yet. Put it on. I want you to see how it works. Okay. I'm, I'm, Are you I'm listening sorry to the, for whatever happens with these headphones. Are you listening to the Dixie Chicks? All right. There's a button ears. over here on, okay. the, on the inside that you could switch. Switch the, it at your at uh, your leisure. Uh, you could okay. I don't actually know, but I'll do that. I just pushed it's a button. A oh, no. Not. Push, uh, switch this okay, up. Okay, you do it, because okay. I don't know where All it right. is. All right, wait, is it playing still? <laughs> yeah, there's there's music playing, but oh, there yeah. we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There it is. Yep, there's the start oh. for collar. <laughs> That's what I mean, it looks like. It really does <laughs> kind of look like the collar to my shirt, except it plays Dixie Chicks. <laughs> so it's almost the same thing as like my normal shirt. Okay, it sounds all right. All right. It's a little weird. I'm not going to lie. It's a Is it? Weird. It's a little weird. <laughs> so uh, they sell a ton of these. Really? Uh, not that one specifically, but all of their neck bud headsets. Yes. Yeah, oh my so god! I see so many people yeah. using these things. I, they're very popular. I, yeah, I see them on. I see them on the subway and uh, uh, and they and they all look ridiculous wearing yeah. them around there. And neck. I think I'm sorry. I think the reason is the battery lasts a really long time. On these ones, last like 15 hours Thank or something. You. 30 hours. 30 hours. 30. If you're listening yeah. to the earbuds, only six hours if you're listening to stereo. But that's still pretty good. Yeah, for the earbuds, that's crazy. That's yeah. like forever for Bluetooth headphones. Yeah. And also, I think um, maybe some people find they're a lot easier to lose uh, or not, the, ignore, not lose. Yeah, not keep lose. track of, right? Yeah, 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 because it's just a headband. And so, yeah. But if you go on Amazon, they have like 15,000 reviews for one of the most popular sets. They're they're ridiculously yeah. popular. The, the, those black ones, I see a lot of the black ones with the earbuds that come out. I don't yep. think they have the speak. I don't think they have the speaker like that one. I think they're just earbuds. I think they're just wireless earbuds. But um, yeah, they're, they're, I, I find them to be dis, distasteful in terms of the look. <laughs> I find them to be distasteful. Uh, yeah, that's just me. That's just I find me, them so. to be revolting. Um, uh, it's like a collar. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's like it, a, is, it is. But, yeah. So not a good choice if you want to go run on a treadmill. But if you'd like to know more, my review up is, my review is up at vrheads.com. Uh, LG's Tone Studio. LG Tone Studio. They are neck buds that turn into stereo speakers. And okay. next up, we have... Wait, no, we have David next. David, please, if you want. Oh, what do we what do we have? So I guess we could with start. The phones you brought. So I, I had to bring a couple of phones with me today. Um, the first one being the uh, this is the Moto Z2 Force. 
which you may have heard um, a bit about in the last week. Yeah, last a week. Lot, we a lot of a lot of grumbling about it. I think is kind uh, of been the general uh, consensus. Why? Why the grumbling? What's, I, what's I, so grumbly? I think there's a lot of compromises Motorola has made with this new phone that a lot of people aren't super happy with, and I, I think that a lot of the complaints are pretty fair. So, I mean, if you're looking compared to Motorola Z phones from last year, so let's talk about kind of like, you know, the Z2 Force is, you know, the the Force last year was their durable, you know, ruggedized phone. And so they had the regular Z2 and Z, they had the regular Z and the regular Z, and the Z Force, excuse me. This year, there's just one Z phone, or excuse me, one high-end Z phone, and that's the Z2 Force. And it's got a shatterproof display, which sounds awesome, right? You can drop the phone and it won't break. You could you could throw that across the room in here and it'd be fine. Um, I mean it. Um, I mean it's not mine, so I don't actually care. But <laughs> it's uh, it is that durable, so you can drop this like ten feet off the ground and the display should be okay. Does the display feel plasticky? Yes. Oops. Oops. Oh my! Yeah, sorry. Also, oh. <laughs> you're gonna leave a dent in it when you do that yeah. because the display is a very soft plastic. Um, oh! So you can actually you can run a fingernail down it and dent the plastic. Um, oh, similar to the uh, the the puckering that we saw on the foldable tablet, yes, right? Yes, it is. Kind of similar is to that. Very surprisingly easy. In fact, the, the most the best demonstration. If you run your fingernail along the flash on the front of the phone, okay. you'll feel the display kind of go concave. Oh yeah! Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, gross. it's gross. It is. Yeah. It's, it's not nice. Bend in. It yes. bends in up there. Yeah. Seven hundred dollar phone. Yeah, seven hundred and twenty dollars, <laughs> um, which is clarified today. Apparently, a bunch of people. We all thought it was eight hundred dollars, and Motorola's like, "Never mind, we just suck at doing our website." Um, it's seven hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> um, we didn't do math right, so yeah, it's a really expensive phone. And then the other thing is, it's got a not very big battery. Um, twenty seven hundred odd milliamp hours, I think, maybe a little lesser, a little more than that, somewhere it's in that neighborhood. Super thin. It is I super mean, thin. So you can buy accessories. You're, you're going to want to put a yes. You're going to want to put mods <laughs> on that thing to to beef it up for sure. So there's that. And then there's just kind of, you know, like, well, not everybody wants a ruggedized phone that scratches really easy and costs a ton of money. And and not everybody's really convinced that mods are the future. So in kind of the related, uh, related items, I've also got with me a mod. Um, okay, you've got, ooh. Yeah, so this is, this is the 360 degree camera mod, which Motorola apparently is convinced normal human beings will buy. <laughs> and it does Ooh, it buzzes yeah oh, <laughs> it man, that's lets you know cool. that looks that looks pretty cool so i can use this 360 camera from the camera app correct you can and it should just yeah it oh should just look at that it up. just launched yeah it, once it's connected it automatically goes to 360 oh, mode so you can take your 360 okay. video and you know do all that stuff this this mod is 300 dollars um, oh jeez. Yeah, not not uh, not a small dollars for the mod. Not a small ask. $300. It also wow. makes the phone really thick. It's not yeah. swivelly. It's not swivelly. Well, and there's a battery swivelly. as part of that, right? Um, I'm is not sure. Is there a battery if inside there the? Is with the camera. I'm actually not sure of that, but it is quite chunky, so it makes the phone a little. Actually, yeah. it makes the phone too thick. Oh, yeah, um, hold it down so that. Uh, so. Oh, oh yeah, down in the shot. There we go. There we go. This is why I give it to Jason to do the modeling. He's so <laughs> but I have to. I have to learn. Continue. Yeah. Sorry. So it's a. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of, it's definitely one of those things I don't think there's a lot of consumer demand for these yet, yeah. but everybody can build them now. I think it's pretty easy to make a 360 degree camera. So everybody's like, let's make a 360 degree camera and see what happens with that. I also don't think the design is necessarily the best because you've got on the, on the camera mod here, like the way this sits, it's like, you can bend it. And Ooh. I feel like you could eventually bend it off. In your, in oh, your bag. Yeah, yeah you would not want to leave this in your bag, I don't think. Um, it's got a little like rubber nub that it comes with that you can put over it to shield the lenses, but it just doesn't feel very sturdy. Yeah. So I'm kind of questioning their, their design choices here. Um, it does have this lovely yellow highlight on the inside of the mod case. That, that's that, a that's a warning color. It that's is. like warning. It's not snapped to anything. Quick, snap it to something. <laughs> yeah. Boom. <laughs> and and that's the only mod that's like been announced in terms of price and release date with the new Z2 Force. They've also got this gaming controller thing they're gonna do, yeah. but that that one knows? was all right. Like I, I can it, see, it looks I see cool. a place for that. Yeah, but like, but how many people are gonna get it? Exactly, and they they haven't said how much it's gonna cost or anything, yeah. or when it's coming out. So yeah, that's the Z2 Force, which just seems like a lot of money for a phone that's kind of weird and in some ways kind of hard to like. What do you, What do you think, Ron? I'm I like it. 
I mean, I know I'm the only person who thinks that the uh, the, the the mods and things like that are nonsense, but uh, I would be worried about breaking that. But I think it's pretty cool, although the price tag is disturbing. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, almost a grand for the whole package, right? Because yeah. Of the 360 oh, well, and the, the phone. 360 camera. Okay, now, is, I, I don't think there's a discount on that. They do throw in when you buy the phone the InstaShare projector mod for free. That that see, that's okay. pretty cool. Because nobody bought them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and they get rid of them. They've got to get their numbers, their warehouse usage full numbers of, of, yeah, of, of Moto Mods yeah. up so they can tout it in some future marketing yes, presentation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I've got one other Motorola phone here today, which is the, the E4 Plus, which um, is coming out uh, like really soon. So you'll be able to buy this on August 3rd from retailers like Amazon, um, Best Buy. I think Verizon and Sprint are going to sell it at some point too. This is, by contrast, a really pretty interesting phone if you're into something that's like in the 180 to $200 segment. So the cool thing about this phone is, I don't know if you can really tell how thick it is here. It's pretty thick. That's because there's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in there. Nice. So this is designed <laughs> to get you easily through two days of usage. Wow. No problem. Nice. That was the whole kind of, that's the marketing story for the phone and everything. And I believe it. I'm sure it will easily get most people through two days. I think it has the same camera as the G5 Plus. Don't quote me on that, but I'm and no free. bump because it's not. Yeah, as there's thin. barely. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. There's a little bit of battery hiding under there to uh, to elevate things. So, and it's you know it starts at 180 bucks for the 16 gigabyte version. There's a tw there's a 32 gigabyte version. You should buy that one. It's 200 dollars. 20 dollars to double your storage to be actually useful. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah. It's without sure. a doubt. And the unlocked version works on all four major U.S. carriers. Sure. So it's it's a pretty good deal, and you know it's Moto software, so it's stock Android, and yeah, it just you know it it performs pretty well, considering it has Snapdragon four twenty five, which is you know not the fastest chip, but they could do worse. It's a travel phone. It is, and it lasts for two days, and it, you can be in a hostel with no electricity. Exactly, please don't David. Mean that. David, counting crows. <laughs> oh, oh <man>. no. <laughs> Now everyone knows. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm just saying, counting crows. <laughs> I'm sorry, wow. I, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, uh, it, wow. It's not my playlist. <laughs> it's not mine, man. It's not <laughs> um, uh, wow, big difference between these two devices, though. Like totally different angles. This ends up being way less expensive. But I mean that battery. Yeah, like that's yeah. that's something incredibly useful. Every, everybody needs more battery life. Mm -hmm. Motomod's still kind of proving itself. They're just two completely different markets. But that battery life really. Yeah, this to me feels like a workhorse of a phone, especially with the four. You can take it to any carrier in America. You can take it put most places across the world. It'll work. It lasts a long time. It's got a fingerprint scanner for security. It doesn't have Forget NFC, it. which sucks. But you know. That's just Motorola's kind of thing. They don't think people in America want NFC on their cheap phones because they don't use it. But right. overall, it's it's a really easy phone to like just for what it is because it seems to have a very clear purpose, yeah. which is to last a really long time and be just kind of a clean software experience. And it's going to be very available here in the U.S., right? That yeah. That was their big announcement. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. two days from now, yeah, it will, nice. uh, will be available all kinds of places. Nice. There's, there will also be an Amazon Prime version that will be cheaper. And I with ads on the lock screen. Yeah. With ads on lock screen, yeah. and they'll do the 32 gigabyte version too, though, so you don't have to get the one that doesn't have enough storage. So right. yeah, you can get you'll be able to get a pretty good deal on that. Nice, that's awesome. Right, Brad, uh, Moto E4 Plus, 180 bucks starting, but like get David said, upgrade to the two. Yeah. just 20 bucks more. Yeah, save definitely. your allowance for a few more weeks. And yeah. there's a micro SD slot, so if you really do want to save mm -hmm. the 20 dollars, you know, you could use that, or both, or both. <laughs> Right on. That's awesome. Uh, and then, Flo, you've got rounding out the shack, the one hardware shack. Little eh down here <laughs> in my one more in my pit. Eh. Um, I only brought in one module today, but this is the Samsung Connect Home, one of the nodes from the mesh Wi Fi router mm -hmm. system. Um, a couple people have been asking about this. I just did the review for Android Central, so if you want to go check that out, please do. But otherwise, I can tell you that this is pretty much the same thing as Google Wi-Fi, except that it has SmartThings integration, which 
Ron and I have been talking about is a lot of greatness. It's pretty fun to kind of bring in like automated outlets and things like that in your home. Uh, this sets up exactly the same way as Google Wi-Fi. All it requires is a Samsung Connect app. It works with all of the smart things, integrated uh, accessories. It's the only real bummer about it is that it has a proprietary connector to it. Oh, for the power. For the power, which kind of annoys me because I like to use USB-C. Let's me have more cords around the house that do double duty. Yeah, you get the USB-C connector on the Google Right, Wi-Fi. and I did bring a Google Wi-Fi for Comparo. So right here, we've got the Google Wi-Fi um, from ahead. This is the Connect Home, as you They're can see. They're both very bright. Both very <laughs> bright and white. Um, the Samsung one looks like it's signature squircle. Mm -hmm. As you can see, yep. uh, on the bottom, it's got the fan, whereas the Google Wi-Fi, it's a little chunkier. So you're definitely like saving a lot of space getting the Connect Home. Uh, the app, though, is, you know, it, it's not as robust as maybe a network aficionado, aficionado would like, but uh, it's good for my house. Mm -hmm. Works for allows my you house. to see all the devices. Allows you that to see are connected the devices on the it, network. Allows, allows you to easily create a guest network. Um, it you know it takes seconds to well not seconds but it takes less than an hour to set up this whole thing in the house. All three. If you buy a pack of three, mm -hmm. um, you can also just buy one if you just have a small apartment and you just want a little Wi-Fi router with Smart Things integration, so that you know you can maybe put a multi-purpose sensor at your door. You can log every time you walk in the house and. And all sorts of things. You can you can turn your your Christmas lights on. Yes, like with Ron your voice. did over the like holidays. Ron. Yep, that was a smart things thing, right? So yes, I currently I put up uh, lights on our patio, and now they're controlled by the Google Home via Samsung Smart Things. Nice. So yeah, all right. Yeah. Cool. So and you've been home. now you've been living with the Wi-Fi, the Google Wi-Fi in your home for a while, right? Yes, yeah, since that's it been, came out. That's been your mesh. Yes. How, did, how did it compare to the, the Samsung one in your time? Well, we are having problems right now. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I am having some problems reconnecting everything. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. But I'm like kind of a network noob as well. So these are... Yeah. But I'm in a lot, of, a lot of trouble because there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work in the house right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a Google Wi-Fi story I shared with Jason yes. before the show where um, I, I reviewed the Google Wi-Fi when yes. it came out last year and I, I saw it, I had my set of three and I moved and I went to set them up and the new apartment is downstream devices to like a router, you know, rather than one of the Google Wi-Fi's being a router, there's a router already on the network. So I figured, oh, this should be easy. I'll just set them up and they should just know to be access points because there's a router and they didn't know what to do. And I couldn't connect to them because they expected to be route. One of them expected to be a router. And so the app wouldn't work. And then I was like, well, there's got to be some way just to reset these things, right? Just to clear them. Um, and so I just held down that button on the back of the Google yeah, Wi Fi the there. Yeah, for like 30 seconds. And, and they did reset. And then they were all dead. So they didn't work oh. anymore. I don't know if it was an you issue. You killed your Google Wi-Fi. I killed their just useless white hockey pucks now. They don't do anything. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we should talk about doing an art project, first of all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> second of all... What to do with your dead <laughs> Google Wi-Fi. <laughs> second of all, yeah, I'm having... We had trouble... I mean, we had, we had complications setting up Google Wi-Fi as well. So I... There's some things I need to learn about my network. But as far as connectivity goes, like strength of internet and all that, just fine. <laughs> Whatever has been able to connect. Yeah. <laughs> cool. A lot of I, I love these these mesh. Uh, I love solutions. them too, and they, they've really helped me out in our home. I, I mean, quite honestly, I'm sticking with this right now because I really like the Smart Things integration, mm -hmm. and I don't really want to deal with having like the separate hub. Yeah. And I am. I mean, I'm. I've got a whole cart full at Best Buy right now that's just waiting to be purchased of Smart Things. So. Oh yeah, I'm going all in, baby. I'm all going all, is, all in. All you gotta do is hit check. I want to know everything. I want to know every time a moth flies in my house, where it's flying, what it's doing in how my many house. Moths, how much does it weigh? What's it coming after? <laughs> smart moth things. Yeah, smart, smart moth. That's smart, that's smart moth. They're going to start really uh, branching off into different directions as far as uh, how your home becomes even more smart.
over time. Uh, just you wait and see. And all that will get hacked to all get out. Jeez, Jason. <laughs> it's true. IoT is a mess in a security. On your I house. know. I'm just, yeah, just let me live in my little bubble for a while. I I'm just preparing it. you for the future, okay, Flo? Yeah, but I'll be here crying on the show. Because your house is going to be involved in a botnet. Oh my just, God. Just, no, okay. stop it. It's not. You can't say those things on the Twin Network. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll give you time to rest. We're going to thank the sponsor and then we're going to jump into the arena and uh, show off a few apps. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Uh, if you're in charge of hiring for your business, for your company, you have the most important job in a company. The people that you hire, you, you already know this, they can make or break your business. But do you know where to post jobs to find the most qualified candidates. It's not easy. There's million, I mean, there's million and one places online to post those jobs. Finding the right talent, uh, you know, is it's essential, but it's not always that easy. ZipRecruiter will connect you to the most qualified candidates for any job, including highly sought after tech professionals. They're all there uh, with just one click. You can post your job to 100 plus job sites. Uh, their powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job better than anyone else. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you, it finds them. In fact, over 80% of jobs posted on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. No more juggling emails, no more calls to your office. You simply screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one simple place with ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use dashboard. You connect with a wide variety of professionals, including IT experts. You can take your company to the next level, and you can do that today. More than 200 million applications have been delivered. And if you're currently searching for a job, ZipRecruiter will help find your future job in any industry, including technology, government, business, finance, and more. And you can upload your resume and apply with a single click. Even that's made super easy. Be sure to check out the ZipRecruiter blog as well for recruiting tips and career advice. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now you can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash twit and we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of all about android and the twit network and now brian it's time for the arena so many enter <laughs> but only one lives android arena last week's poll last week's episode 327 we'll check in on the results and it looks like gratis wins wow. at 51%. Wow. Uh, Francisco Franco's new app, of course, that's all about kind of bringing a little of, I don't know, a little bit of positivity into your life. 51% of the votes go to that. Uh, second place, Sleep Town at 22%. Third place, Clip Layer at 19%. And fourth place, Deamplify. That was Ron's pick. Deamplify. Or de Deamplify or Deamplify? De the amp, there's no ampla. Amplify. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter because I lost. So wah, wah. sorry. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hey, I got to tell you, with that, with that win for gratis, those guests are knocking on the door. We're seeing a, a surging of the guests. Uh, so through 30 weeks of the arena, we're uh, we're more than well, well more than halfway through. Um, I'm still in first place with 80 points. The guests now have 78 points in second. Jason, you've fallen to third place with 75 points, and Flo still bringing up the rear with 73 points. Jeez, Ron. <sighs> Closing in, though. That that gap is narrow. Yeah, that gap is that gap you is guys narrow. You that every <laughs> week. Expect me to feel better every week. It's never going to work. It'll work. I don't know. Hey, it's Working only for the August. It's only August. Working for the, yeah, this, you put together a great stretch run like That's last year. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah it's true. Oh, it's, yeah. We're already halfway through, more than halfway through the year, so... Well, hey, don't anybody, look at hey, it like listen. that. All right, let's do it's this gonna, arena. Let's right, do this right, battle. Do this. All right, it's been it's been a long time since I've had a win, and I need one. And I'm hoping I'm hoping I can lean on the nerds to help me get this. Uh, wow, get this Ron, win are here. you asking for a pity win? No, no, I'm asking for a pity win. But this is an app that has long been wanted on Android. Um, a version of it was available for various uh, ROMs and things like that. I believe it was on CyanogenMod. Mod, uh, but now. Uh, without needing any root access or ROM access or anything like that, Caffeine is now available um, as a quick settings title 
Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Caffeine, Caffeine is a popular app that's available for Linux and for OS X that allows you to uh, basically keep your screen from either going to sleep or a screensaver kicking in or any sort of thing. It basically keeps your screen alive for time increments. Um, so once you install this app, there's no app icon on, on your desktop or anything like that. It installs a quick tile setting, um, which you can see here as Jason is now adding the Caffeine quick tile to the notifications pane. And if you swipe to the right, uh, if you just tap on it, you'll see the word caffeine will change to a timer and it starts off at five minutes. And now your screen won't dim or won't go dark. It will keep the screen alive for that time period. If you need, if you're working on something and you, you need 10 minutes, you can just tap on it again. You can keep tapping on it to increase that time period. Um, and so that, that allows you to do that. If you long tap on it, it pulls up this, there you go. It pulls up a little inch, uh, it actually pulls up the app and it pulls, so just long tap on that. So Sorry. there you go. Yep. There we go. It pulls up and it basically explains to you how to use caffeine and gives you the opportunity to, uh, to uninstall it. So very simple. Keep your screen alive if you're working on something or you don't want your screen to go dark. Um, for whatever reason, just one tap in your notification center and you've got caffeine. Four there taps and you get infinity. Stay on yep. forever. Forever. So there it is. Forever. Forever. Yep. Free right. in the Google Play Store. Uh, all of our hopes and dreams have been answered now. So there you go. I'll leave it on for 10 <laughs> minutes. Awesome. Yeah. Caffeine. Go cool. find it. Get some caffeine. Um, okay. So my app, first of all, I must thank Megan Maroney because I was a little panicky earlier. I was like, yeah. I had an idea. It didn't pan out. You know, you have this idea and you think you got it in the bag. And then as you test it and you work with it and everything, you realize uh, if this isn't working for me, it's not going to work for anyone else. I had so the same thing. Bail. Yeah, I had the same thing. I was I had an app that I was going to use and I couldn't get it to work. I wonder if it was the same app. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll was talk. it something that required beta access? No. Oh, okay. That's you know, not. there's like millions of apps in the app store. Yeah. So yeah, I know, uh, I know. I just, th I thought our luck, we would have the same thing. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> we might, we might be on the same page, but no, this is, it was, this was different. Uh, but Megan showed me an app that at first, like she showed it to me. She's like, well, what about this one? And I was like, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. All right, sure. I'll put that in my pocket, you know, put that on ice, see if I can find something. And then I started playing around with it. And I actually think it's really great. It's called little alchemy and it's a game uh, so it's okay. Apparently it syncs. I didn't realize that, but, uh, it syncs across devices. It's going to load That's here. Good to know. We'll play. So it's a game, but it's also a lesson, uh, to a certain degree. What, what it is, is as you can see down here, 14 out of 560, basically what you're working with are elements and you see the elements as you discover elements they are added to your right hand side. So, you know, so far you start with very bare bones elements like air, earth, a fire, water, that sort of stuff. As you start to drag things out here, and I'm hoping that I can come up with combinations, you start to create new elements. And your goal is to create all 560 elements by combining things. And uh, I've, I've combined the, the obvious ones, but I'm sure if I take gunpowder and fire out here, I it results in an explosion. And so now I've got explosion to work with. Um, does explosion and gunpowder do something? Probably not because it was part of the, the creation of that. What about earth and explosion? Uh, no, okay, when it, when it doesn't do anything, it just kind of stays there. Does explosion and metal do something? Yes, it creates a grenade, excellent. So you keep doing this and you kind of figure out how you can combine all of these different materials over time. Seems kind of simple, but as you're playing with it, it's kind of a little bit of a brain teaser because the lot, it, as you go along, there's actually a little bit of logic to it. And you start to kind of think like, oh, wait a minute. I know this is probably going to do something. And you discover something uh, different. I did create a boiler at some point, which I was kind of surprised by. Um, so I'm sure, you know, maybe would a boiler and fire do something? No. Would a boiler? What happens if? No. So I don't know. I'll, I'll combine stuff with a boiler and see what I come up with. I'm sure grenade. Grenade must work on a boiler. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> it should. All right. It should explode or something. Little Alchemy. It's a fun little game, and there's there's a little bit of a kind of a lesson to it. Not only that, it's completely free, no ads. It's just a cool way to kind of combine elements and see what you come up with, and hopefully you can uncover all 560 of them and uh, document your progress as you go. Little Alchemy, and it's free. Check it out. All right, David. I know it was hard. I know it was hard it was. to come up with an app. It always is because we've covered so many of them on the show. But you found an app that you actually use all the time. I use it every day. 
There we go. And have for months and months when somebody introduced this to me. So the app is called Pulse. Um, I can't really give you a camera demo because I don't want to show everybody my text messages, but it's a texting app. And so Pulse is developed by, if you know the developer, Clinker Apps. Mm -hmm. um, they're uh, an independent developer, and this app is probably the best thing they've released. And so I, let me just break it down for you. If you use SMS messaging on Android, you've probably been in a situation where, wow, I really wish I could answer this text on my, my laptop or my desktop or my tablet. And Clink, or Pulse lets you do that. And not just that, it syncs all of your SMS in the cloud you know, forever. It's attached to an account. So you open up the, you can open up the Pulse web messenger in any browser. You can open up the Pulse app on any other Android device. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with iOS. You could use the web interface on an iOS device if you were desperate, but, and it would work, but it's all done via, you have your account linked to one device that is the hub and every other device you log into just basically, you know, sends it through to the cloud, back down to your hub device, and then the SMS gets sent and received that way. So it's kind of like having Apple Messages in a way. Mm -hmm. So you have this true cross-device capability. Now, for that to work as far as the web client goes, which I think is really the big, the big thing that makes this so cool, you do have to pay. Um, there is a lifetime license you can unlock, which I don't remember the price of. Completely worth it. This app has totally changed the way I do SMS on Android. It is easily the best new app I've discovered in probably years. Um, and if you really want to, you know, check it out, it's also just a good SMS client in general, good customization options, you know, just generally well-designed, very clean layout. I, I just, I can't recommend this app enough. It will, if you do a lot of SMS texting, especially, you know, if you have a lot of friends that have iPhones, for example, you're going to be doing a lot of texting via SMS. This is better than Android messages. It's so much more powerful. And honestly, just being able to do, you know, texting in your web browser, it's it's total game changer for me, at least. Nice. And it looks really good. Yeah. Um, excellent. Uh, cool. So that is Pulse SMS. Some in the chat were like, are you sure there was Pulse News? There was like a news yep. app mm -hmm. that was Pulse that we covered years ago. It was in episode nine. Yeah, yeah. I, I checked as well. Yeah, yeah. I, pl I played because I like Clinker apps. I think that's a great, yep. they're, they're a good developer. And I played with this. I don't know why I didn't end up using it because I'm still, because I'm on texture land. But uh, yeah, this is, this is a great app. So yeah, good, Clinker good does Talon for Twitter, Evolve SMS. Yep. Uh, a few others, Source, which is a newsreader. Uh, and this is Pulse SMS. And yeah, check that out. It looks great. Awesome. Great pick. All right. Flo, is it Flo? You're up. My name is Flo, yes. Is, is it Flo your name? Yeah, my name is Flo. Hey, guess what I brought to the what? arena today? I brought, um, I brought another sequencer to the arena today. <laughs> Because now that I don't have a job, I have a lot of free time. So what have I been doing? I've been trying to make, I've been playing with sequencer apps because that's what I do now in that's my what free you do. time. That's what you do. <laughs> so uh, I like this one, Sammy, which I think stands for like something sound and something machine or something or other. Uh, but this is, find it. this is a very simple sequencer and hopefully you can you can all hear this. I think you can. Oh, I'm just gonna press a lot of random buttons. Okay, turn it up. Oh, yeah, the Pixel speaker is not great. Uh, oh, well, that's you, and you did that so quickly. I made that. I made that in a couple of seconds. You, I can, you can change the key easily with just okay. a little piano here in the corner. Uh huh. Transpose. Tra is that what it's called? Transpose. Yes. <laughs> I just did this so I could get a free lesson from Jason. Sorry, y'all. Um, <laughs> you can record and save your beats. You can set the beat uh, rate. <laughs> the BPM. Yes, beats per minute. Yes. <laughs> the beat rate. I have just been playing. Um, there's also you can do an oscillators and filters and mixers and i don't know what this is but um, it, that's i think it's the tweaking one right yeah it's oh yeah that's like yeah okay like a touchpad and they, it's they a touch pad they thingy. do different different uh different features for the x and y coordinates so that when you go there up you and go. down it does volume when you go it side sounds to side, like when you're at the dentist 
<laughs> and they're putting the sucker in your mouth. Um, so yeah, that's Sammy. And it's completely free. If you don't pay for it, you will get the little ads. So please support your developer. It's not that bad. It's just a uh, dollar. 99 cents per me. item. Okay. It's a dollar. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a dollar to unlock it. Yeah, sequencer. It has a drone machine, they call it. That's for the oscillators and stuff. So basically some synths in there that you can program. A theremin, which if you move your phone, it will go. I really appreciate Jason explaining this for me. <laughs> so I've been like, I'm like trying to make sounds for my voice because apparently I'm, I'm just trying to like make stuff at home because that's. Apparently, what I've been doing. You, so I'm like got, trying you to. You got the I'm trying flow to make going. my own. Yeah, I'm trying to like make my own like music. So it's like royalty free, but I don't know how. So that's why I've been looking into sequencer. So welcome to my Your life. Your music's gonna sound like. <laughs> it's all I listen to. It's all I listen to anyway. So. Right on. So that's Sammy. S A M M I. Um, still, I've, I've been looking. I'm trying to figure out what that stands for, but I, I can't. Uh, but maybe you know. Email AAA at TV and let us know. <laughs> if you know. Uh, Sammy is what you want to look for. S-A-M-M-I. Okay, so we have four apps in the arena this week. Twit.to slash poll 328. If you want to go vote for your favorite app this week, twit.to slash AAA poll 328. Is it caffeine? Oh, I is knew it. it. I knew it. Alchemy? Is it Pulse SMS? Or is it Sammy? Place your vote. We'll check in on it next week and see who is the winner and see how the, the poll standings fluctuate. Brian voted for polls, by the way. So Brian gave our guest a vote. So there we go. That's yeah, why. but it's really cool. And that's what uh, Allo should have done from the start, too. So well, yeah. be cool. Yeah. Yeah. How many guys? Pretty good app. Excellent. Until Allo gets here. <sighs> Desktop. No. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll see when that happens. Yeah. Still holding out for that one. Uh, <laughs> David, thank you so much for coming up. This Thanks is a lot of fun. Me, yeah. We got to get you back here if you're willing to put up with the drive. I know that's a that's a tall order, but I would love to have you back anytime. Definitely. Uh, where do you want people to follow all the stuff you're doing? On oh, God, Twitter. Just search for David Ruddick Twitter. <laughs> I, I Saying my handle out loud is just like, it's just a Gar like it's a garbage disposal of numbers and letters. <laughs> but it's fun. What is it? Say it out loud. It's, it's RDR0B11. And the story? Oh, it's my initials and the I have a suffix at the end of my name and the 0B11 is three in binary. I, I'm a third. <laughs> so, yeah. You really didn't want anybody well, to find you on Twitter, did no, you? No, I guess not. <laughs> what I'm impressed by is that it's 2017 and you're still sticking with it. <laughs> I, I just like don't, a, I don't feel a need to change. Like at, at this point, I've seen I've seen a lot of people with with questionable Twitter handles, myself included. Um, <laughs> who, but I haven't changed it. But uh, I've seen other people change it. Like, well, I'm writing professionally now, or I'm doing this. Yeah. They all these. Re Jason, you did that a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, I was Raygun zero one for years, and then I, I miss Raygun. Oh. I'm still owe yeah. that flow because that's what yep. every boss I've ever had has said to me. Oh, that flow. Well. <laughs> uh, by the way, there is an at David Ruddick on Twitter. Is there? Yes. Ooh. I don't know if you've ever checked. Apparently, you have not checked, no, but there I is. I've never checked. Um, and <laughs> last tweet was April Sorry. 21st, 2016. Before that, 2015. Not very active, but nonetheless, it exists. So eh, just well. so you know. Likes the party. Wow. <laughs> Likes the <it>. great. <laughs> but yeah. Based on the profile photo, does like the party. And you can find him on Snapchat too. Uh, there we go. That's the wrong David though. You're not going to find David Roddick who's sitting next to us here at the table. Again, thank you. Appreciate thank you. Uh, Flo, what, uh, what about you? What's what going about on? me? What's going on? Well, I kind of already teased stuff that I've been working on. You can find me on the internet. The best place to find me right now is at Twitter at oh, that Flow. Uh, and on Snapchat, I owe that flow. Also, I'm just writing across the internet. Tune in to FlorenceIon.com, where I will be Tune eventually in. updating. <whistles> yeah. And Tune who knows? Maybe you'll see an receiver. album from me very soon of music I made with my Android phone. Yes. By pressing it. random buttons. <laughs> 80 minutes. DJ of Flow pure Glow DJ coming flow. out 2018. <laughs> uh, awesome stuff. Ron, what about you? Yes. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at RonXO. Um, there are various Ron Richards on the Twitter world out there, but I am the original Ron XO. Um, and of course, there I like to tweet out about my various podcasts. You can check out iFanboy every Sunday where we're talking about comic books and comic book TV and movies and all fun stuff like that. And then, of course, Damn Fine Podcast at damnfinepodcast.com where me and Tom Merritt 
are uh, talking with some pretty cool guests. We just had uh, my friend Brea Grant, who is an actress. She was on Heroes and Dexter and stuff like that. Uh, she's a big Twin Peaks fan. Uh, we're talking about Twin Peaks. We've only got six episodes left in season three, and we're going to analyze every one of them until the end, uh, having a ball doing it. So please come watch or listen. Listen, not watch. Well, watch the show and then listen to us. So There we go. Uh, or watch the MP3 waveform. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, yeah, you can watch the the, the time just go by, each second go by. So. <laughs> it makes the show last longer when you watch. Yeah, that's what absolutely. They say. Uh, thanks, Ron. Uh, Brian, what about you? What about me? Oh, apparently nobody Ooh. thought my jokes tonight were very punny. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, the headphones <laughs> fell. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, like uh, like most of us here at the table, you can follow me on Twitter, and I am still at cranky underscore hippo, where Ron felt the need to call me out that I was tweeting during the show, which <laughs> hardly ever happens, Ron. I don't know what you're talking. Do we want to show that? Do you want to show that conversation? In fact, is that Bailey's that at your desk? <laughs> oh, so okay, yeah. So the show that I do on the network is called Know How. I do it with Padre. He's coming back in like a week and a half, or Yay! maybe two. So I took the opportunity to go through his drawer <gasps> to see what he had. And I've been trying to take care of his plants, too. Not doing very well. Bailey's in his drawer. Hot sauce from Domino's and <laughs> Bailey's. Quite the combination. That's weird. Well, so, But let's look at what you posted during this during the episode here. Uh, uh, can't. I don't know. Got to sign up for Twitter can. before. Uh, yeah, you'll have to go bad. to Twitter to find out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Ron definitely oh, yeah. didn't call me out. <laughs> Yep, I definitely didn't call you out at all. I was like, shouldn't you be TDing right now? <laughs> it was a robot post. It was a scheduled tweet for sure. Yeah, oh, scheduled, totally. Yeah, totally he's scheduled. a buffer. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you can find me, jasonhowell.net, yellowgoldmusic.com. I should also let you know that I'm doing the new screensavers this weekend. Uh, so I'll be here. If you have a question about Android-y things or music-y things or things in general that you want on the show, email newscreensavers at twit.tv. And uh, who knows? We might call you for the call for help. We might answer it in the mailbag. Whatever. Point being, I'll be here this Saturday with Leo, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So make sure and check that out. Uh, but that is it for this week for All About Android. Thank you, as always, for, for watching, downloading, listening, wherever you happen to get the show. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us an email or a video mail to triple A at twit.tv, and we can include it in the show. You can find us on Twitter. We're at Android Show. We have a subreddit where you can post stories if you like. TwitAAA.reddit.com. Show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash AAA. That's our site with everything. You can also find our episodes on uh, YouTube, iTunes, Pocket Cast, all over the web. And catch us live every Tuesday starting at 5.30 p.m. Pacific. TwitTV slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everyone.